Hello, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy, and this is Seafood Source TV, the bi-weekly video blog with news information and insights into the global seafood industry. This week, new assessments of global wild salmon fisheries, shrimp farmers may be finally making headway against DMS, new fishing quotas are set in Europe for 2015, a task force studying pirate fishing is looking for help, more bad news for Pesca Nova, and Australian diners may soon learn a lot more about where their fish comes from. But first, the industry is abuzz worldwide with news that Thai Union Frozen Products is buying Bumblebee Foods for a total purchase price of $1.5 billion U.S. dollars. And that's the subject of our take this week. Despite the very public move, the deal is not yet official and will still need to pass muster with U.S. antitrust regulators. But one thing is for sure. With this purchase, Thai Union is angling to become the largest canned tuna producer in the world and will definitely benefit from consolidation. Not brand consolidation. There's way too much value in the Bumblebee brand for Thai Union to just shelve it. More likely, Thai Union will consolidate operations and procurement, making for a more streamlined business model that will benefit both brands, not to mention becoming the largest skipjack produced tuna producer in the world, with combined annual sales likely to add up to billions of U.S. dollars. No doubt Starkist will have its hands full. The Korean-owned canned seafood company will be the only major tuna producer left in the United States that could compete with Thai Union, and it'll be an uphill climb against the combination of both Chicken of the Sea and Bumblebee. But if Thai Union keeps both brands separate, that means little will appear to have changed at the consumer level, and there's a chance that will make it harder for U.S. regulators to make an antitrust case. It's just one more reason we think Thai Union should keep the Bumblebee brand right where it is, on American supermarket shelves, where it belongs. That's our take. Elsewhere in the industry, a new report from Rabobank indicates shrimp farms that have been decimated in recent years by early mortality syndrome, or EMS, may be poised for a comeback. The report, A New Dawn for the Prawn, said shrimp farmers are learning from breakthroughs identifying the cause of the disease and are already taking measures to improve biosecurity. Rabobank was careful not to declare the disease conquered, saying it is still the number one challenge to the shrimp farming industry worldwide, but cited specific hard-hit regions such as Vietnam that are already showing moderate increases in production in 2014. A new report from the Sustainable Fisheries Partnership is declaring nearly half of the world's wild salmon fisheries are not what the NGO would describe as well or reasonably managed. The report said 52% of the total volume of wild Pacific salmon comes from well-managed fisheries, but 48% comes from fisheries, quote, in need of significant improvements, unquote. The bad marks focus particularly on Japanese fisheries and those in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. The group said all of those fisheries need improvements. In Europe, the EU's Agriculture and Fisheries Council has set quotas for various species for 2015. While the official list of who gets what is not out yet as of this recording, industry leaders are already praising the quotas as being fair-minded, while various environmental groups, including Greenpeace and Seas at Risk, accused the council of failing to protect endangered stocks. Industry leaders such as Europesh's Javier Garat also said that they were worried about upcoming discard bans set to take effect in January 2015. Turning to the United States now, a presidential task force studying illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, or IUU fishing, along with seafood mislabeling and fraud, has released its prim preliminary findings. The task force outlined its recommendations in broad terms, but offered few details on how to implement them. Instead, the task force asks for public input and suggestions on the best way to proceed. The task force is expected to send its final list of recommendations to President Barack Obama sometime in the first quarter of 2015. Embattled Spanish seafood giant Pescanova is showing lackluster results compared to 2013. The company became embroiled in scandal last year when Spanish regulators discovered company officials were cooking the books, disguising, disguising hundreds of millions of euros in debts to inflate the company's image and standing in the markets. The scandal led to the removal and replacement of the company's CEO and entire board of directors. But not surprisingly, year-to-date figures through September recently released by the company showed a decrease of 7.5% in consolidated turnover compared to the same period last year. A company official told Seafood Source the final quarter's numbers may improve the overall picture, but the public won't see those numbers until January. And finally this week, if you live in Australia and visit the local fish and chip shop regularly and wondered where your fish comes from, you won't have to wonder much longer. According to a report in the Guardian newspaper, the Australian Senate is recommending the hospitality industry begin implementing country of origin labeling on its seafood products. The rules are similar to what supermarkets and fish markets already have to do. No word yet on penalties for non-compliance, but the Australian Senate has given the industry a year to begin using labels. 
That's it for now, but be sure to check back here in 2015 for our next Seafood Source TV, where we'll give you a rundown of the top stories from 2014. Till then, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you online.